Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating the number of trials for a specified probability using Excel. As always, if you find this video to be helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in this worksheet fictitious data I'll be using for this example. And let's say that we have a probability of occurrence of 10%. And let's say this probability deals with a research study. And we have capacity in this research study to accept at most one new participant a day. And for every day that passes, there's a 10% chance that we will have one new participant. So 10% chance per day that a new participant will come into the study and we can only take a maximum of one participant a day. And that's why it would be important to make the calculation here that I'm going to make. What we want to figure out with this probability of occurrence is how many days do we have to wait to reach a specified probability. So if we want an 80% chance of having a new per participant come into the study, how many days do we have to wait with a 10% chance per day so that we can be 80% sure we'll have a new participant in our study? So the first thing I need to do to figure out this problem is I need to calculate the probability of non-occurrence. So in any given day, we have a 10% chance of getting a new participant. Here in cell D4, you can see I have 1 minus D2. So 1 minus the probability that an event will occur is the probability of non-occurrence, the probability that, that event won't occur. So each day, I have a 90% chance that I will not be having a new participant join the study. That's the probability of non-occurrence. With this information, we can calculate the number of days. So I have this equation built out here. So you can see I'm going to start with 90 to the power of x. And this is going to equal the specified probability and let's say that's 80%. We want to be 80% sure that we have a new participant. So this is going to be 90 to x power equals 80%. Now this is the probability of non-occurrence, 90% to the power of x. We want the probability of occurrence, and the probability of occurrence plus the probability of non-occurrence equals 1. So I'm going to take 1 and subtract this 90% raised to the power of x equals 80%. I need to solve this equation to determine the number of days. So you may be wondering how I arrived at this 90% to the power of x for this critical term here in this equation. So let's consider how probabilities work here with occurrence and non-occurrence. So if we wanted to calculate the probability that a participant would, a new participant entered the study, for three days in a row with this probability of occurrence of 10%. We would take this 10% and cube it. And of course that would be 1 over 1,000. That would be 0.1%. 1 over 10 to the third power. We can think of the probability of non-occurrence in a similar way. If we want to determine what the probability would be that we do not get a new participant over the course of three days, so we go for three days with no new participant coming in, it would be 90 to the third power, 90% to the third power, or 0.9 cubed. And that would be about 72%. There'd be a 72% chance of not having a new participant in three days. If we wanted to calculate the percent of non-occurrence for four days, that would be 0.9 raised to the fourth power, which is around 65%. So you can see as we add more and more days, the probability of non-occurrence decreases, which is what we'd expect. And as the probability of non-occurrence decreases, the probability of occurrence increases. So that's how we get this term 90 to the x power and 1 minus 0.9 to the power of x. So now let's solve this equation. So for this first step, what I did was I subtracted 1 from both sides because I want to isolate this term 
negative 0.9 to x. So if I subtract 1 from this value 80%, I know that's going to give me negative 20%. So then I'm going to take both sides and multiply by negative 1 to get rid of this minus sign. The minus sign in front of the 0.9 and the minus sign in front of the 20%. On the right side of the equation, I'm just going to enter 20%. So now we have 0.9 raised to the power of x equals 20%. Now I can use a logarithm to solve this equation. And that's going to allow me to separate out this exponent and move it over here. So it's going to be x times. And this will be equal sign. And I'm going to use uh, base 10, log base 10. So this will be log 10. And this will be the 90%. It gives me negative 0.046. And over here on the right side of the equation, I'm going to do the same thing. Log base 10. And 20% will be the value. And that's negative 0.7. So to solve for x in this case, I just need to take this value, negative 0.7, and divide it by negative 0.046. And this gives me 15 days. So in this case, with a probability occurrence of 10%, I need to wait 15 days to be 80% sure that I'll have a new participant in the study. And I can, of course, change this value. And if I change this value, I need to change the value below it as well. So this would be 90% this value down here would change to 10%. And this gives me 21 days. Now this makes sense. If I want a higher certainty, 90% is a higher certainty than 80%, that's going to take more days. In this case, 21 days, almost 22 days. You can also change the probability of occurrence. So if I lower the probability of occurrence, let's say I move from 10% to 5%, I would expect the number of days to increase so I can get to 90% certainty. And they do, they move to 44, almost 45 days. And of course, if I increase the probability, let's move the probability up to 25%, I would expect the number of days to decrease to reach 90% certainty, and they do. It's now eight days. So to be 90% sure, they'll have a new participant. If the probability of occurrence for any given day is 25%, I need to wait eight days. I hope you found this video on calculating the number of trials to meet a specified probability to be useful. Thanks for watching.